So my first impression of Gaziantep, well, what a surprise. I really didn't expect it to be like this. And um, it sort of reminds me of Istanbul. Gaziantep, or Antep as it is still known, even though it changed its name almost 100 years ago, is a modern cosmopolitan city and because of its strategic position on the Silk Road, it's been a major trading centre since ancient times and is now one of Turkey's most important manufacturing areas. It's renowned for the huge production of machine carpets, shoes, soap, and the agricultural harvesting of 60,000 metric tons every year of Antep Fustur, or what we call pistachio nuts. It's also a huge cotton and olive producing area. Because of the trade here, there are dozens of high class hotels and several large shopping centres with many well-known high street shops. And in recent years, the old town and the castle area have been a big attraction for tourists. Gaziantep Castle dates back to the Hittites and then was taken over by the Romans. It's been renovated many times over the centuries and now houses a small military museum. This area of the old town has a lovely atmosphere with character shops and lacantas serving many traditional dishes of the area. There's also a few small but interesting museums. And we came across this one, the Glass Museum. Apart from its interesting collection of ancient glassware and other artifacts, it also had a very quirky courtyard. And nearby we found a comical guy selling tea in the street. And when we got over to the park, we found a guy selling coffee. What machine did you use? This is a new car. It's a Jezre. Okay, get there, get there. Walk around, it's my man. He says this is made with fundukla, my boy. Fustuk. Fustukla. It's fustuk and coffee together and some sugar. So it's quite unusual, I think. Okay. Yeah, it don't taste like coffee though. <laughs> <laughs> Teşekkürler. <gülüyor> Mehmet. Mehmet. Mehmet Yılmaz. Ben Mik amca. Evet, memnun oldum. <gülüyor> ben de. Not your favorite. And not far from the park, we found a great place for lunch. So this is a chutta la margin. That was well read off the yeah, sign. Yeah, but it's uh, delicious. It really is lovely. Washed down with a bit of iron. What more could you want for lunch? Lovely. Mm -hmm. 
Got a bit of heat too, does it? Nothing. It's more like a cream lapide, but um, very nice. And, uh, and, a and this little place was packed, and they were making them like it was on a production line. There's a very special museum a few miles out of the centre, but we weren't sure how to get there. There's lots of buses and they're very confusing where they're going. Um, so we've decided to press the button and get a taxi and somebody's told us it'll work out the same price anyway. Red lights on. In fact, it was a 15 minute ride and it only cost us £2. Welcome to the magnificent museum of Zoukma. How much is it, lovey? 48. For two people, 48 lira? Yeah. Wow, bargain. So all this actually comes from the ancient ruins of Zoukma, which is about 30 miles away. The reason they took all of this out is because the whole area was flooded because of a new dam, a hydroelectric power dam. The area now, um, which is near Halfeti, has actually become a tourist destination because you can still see some of the ruins underneath the water. So this is one of the most famous mosaics which has been dug out and it's interesting to see how they dig these things out because this is normally on the floor of course. This is actually a floor panel, you know people walked on this and the way they've got them up is actually incredible. They put big drills all the way down about, about that thickness below the surface of the picture and they drilled great big long drills all the way through, all the way up, and then they put steel pieces in and they drive them in and eventually it cracks away and, and they fix a big plate on the front to stop it from moving and then lift it up with a crane. It's amazing really, amazing. And it, and it takes days to do one. One thing I do like about this museum is you can actually touch the mosaics. The stones are beautifully smooth with all the years of being walked on. What you can see behind me is the remains from a dining room floor from the house of Menad. Uh, the, the rest of the mosaic was actually stolen, um, but one of the small pieces above is called the Gypsy Mosaic um, and she has been placed in a room all to herself behind this wall, which is quite impressive. When I look at the room and the mosaic as one big piece, I actually get quite emotional. I think it's absolutely fantastic and they're not just people who can do mosaics, these were really talented artists. After seeing all these beautiful artefacts and mosaics, it inspired us to visit the original site and see where they'd all come from. Can I tell you something? Is that not our car? No, that's not our car. <laughs> Our car's behind the bus up there, look. To the original archaeological site of Zoukma, it's about an hour's drive from Gaziantep. And when we got there, we were directed to this large building.
So look at this, it's amazing, isn't it? I, I really didn't expect this. And after being to the museum, you feel that, oh, everything's been taken away, but it's not, because there's a lot of the mosaics and rooms that, like these, which have actually survived. Yeah, it's well worth a visit. Many other towns and ruins went under the lake when it was formed. But the most famous is Halfeti. Known for its rare wildlife, its perfumes and its famous karagul or black roses, which also became the name of a soap opera on Turkish TV years ago. Because of its popularity, Halfeti has recovered from its drowning and has become a major tourist destination. So here we are on our boat trip from Halfeti down the lake, which has been formed by the dam, obviously, years ago. And, um, we're really lucky because the weather is beautiful weather and um, it's 15th of October now and we're still in, well I'm still in shorts and t-shirt and it's lovely. This is by far the most popular boat trip going out of Halfeti and it goes to Savashankuyu which was also partly submerged when the lake was formed. En route it goes past an ancient ruin called Rumkale, which in Turkish means Greek Roman castle. Apparently the ruins of Rumkale are also accessible by road. Part of Halfeti that survived the reservoir flooding is actually an interesting place on its own, with a few restaurants and cafes and a few places to stay. And it's a great place to meet other travellers and chat with the locals. <laughs> I asked this ice cream guy, how was life before the dam? He said, well, we lost our house and our garden. So I said, well, what was in the garden? We had plums, apricots and black roses. I said, well, can't you plant them up here? We have no land up here. Where should we plant them? In the road? And then when I paid him with some small change, he said, he said, where did you get this gypsy money from? <laughs> We've been in Gaziantep for a few days now, and um, one thing we've noticed is, you can eat out at all these lovely lacantas, um, but none of them serve alcohol. If you want alcohol, you have to go to a little corner shop or eat in the restaurant of your hotel. You'll find a lot of the lovely food in the old town area. It's quite spicy traditional meat kebabs, 
which is served with mezes, fresh salad and bulgur, but not rice. You can't beat Asian Antep Salatasa in Antep. Gaziantep. So we've realised why we're in Gaziantep that um, most of the food is the same in every Lakanta. Do you know, in a city of nearly two million people, I can't believe there's not a Chinese restaurant or an Indian restaurant, and there's probably not an Italian restaurant either. So we decided to try out the metro system and investigate the restaurants in another part of the city. Put it on. Has it gone green? No, it's not working. <laughs> ah, it's worked, okay. You can get off anywhere and change and when you come out, you've only paid two and a half lira. Come <laughs> 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 on. So en route, we thought we'd go to the botanical gardens. So this is the botanical gardens, which um, shuts at six o'clock. Oh well, next time. We're going to a restaurant tonight called Boaz Curry, which is, we, we found it on TripAdvisor, it's one of the high rated ones. And it's in a place called Shahin Bay, which is a different district of Gaziantep, nowhere near the castle. It's actually five miles away from the castle. And this area is full of young people because of the university. And um, lots of people speak English here as well because of that. The young people want to learn their English. We're at this restaurant where we've been given a menu um, on a tablet, which is great. I'm already looking at the desserts. <laughs> And they do new alcohol beer. Hey. The food here was so good. We went back the next night. So, so I had a pizza, and Judy had salmon on noodles, which was eaten already. So I can't film it. But my pizza, strangely enough, with his walnuts, it's got tomatoes, peppers, olives, and pineapple in it. Absolutely amazing. On their menu, they have mixed cuisines from all over the world and their own dishes. And their signature dessert, which is made from different nuts, is amazing. This has got to be one of the nicest desserts I've had. It's absolutely delicious. I got all excited because I thought they served FS across the road over there, but they don't. It's just the name of the restaurant. I don't feel at all intimidated or bothered as a, a Western blonde woman wandering around. Um, everybody seems just so lovely, friendly and courteous. Um, maybe has that got something to do with the fact that nobody drinks alcohol? I don't know. but. Um, um, I can honestly say that I absolutely love this city and I'm sure we'll be back. Unfortunately, in a few days, you can't see everything in a city. Um, but we'll definitely be back to this city. It's really made an impression on us. In part five of our series, we visit the mountain ruins of Nimrut. If you want to see the next film in our series, and future films, of course, uh, please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already or well, follow us on Facebook on Mikamja and uh, there's also a lot of information in the description below that lots of things that you might find interesting if you're traveling in this region thanks for watching <laughs>